What's up guys, Coach Gaglione here. We are back again with Larry Williams at Gaglione Strength Headquarters in Farmingdale, New York, Strong Island. Uh, so today we're talking about the bench press. We're gonna kind of go over the setup, the ex execution of the lift, and also just some competition uh, kind of commands and things like that. So uh, like any of the lifts, uh, a better start is gonna yield a better finish. So the biggest thing that, if we could harp on anything, is we wanna focus on a good setup, okay? So Larry's gonna kind of show, uh, show, show you guys that are watching how to set up and how he likes to set up. Uh, and it's just like in any lift, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we set the feet properly, we wanna make sure we take a good grip on the bar, and we wanna make sure that we're setting our upper back properly as well. So, so Larry's gonna lay down and he's gonna kind of walk through, and you can kind of just talk us through like what you're kind of focusing on as you're going through the lift. Sure. As you're going, so we're just gonna actually just focus on the setup, we're not gonna take it out or anything. Uh, just the setup itself. So how like you're setting your arch, how you're setting your feet and your grip and all that good stuff. Okay. So first thing would be hand placement. And I don't like to go too exaggerated with placing my hands too far. Uh, for a bigger bench, you want to reduce the range motion as much as possible. But I'm kind of after longevity just to play it safe. I sort of find the middle ground between a close grip bench and a very wide grip bench. So I put my, I always put my middle finger on the knurling. So that's how I measure weight for my hands, and I always keep it there. Then next, for me, it's easiest to sort of pull myself up, get my knees out real wide, put it up against the rack, and that lets me get a nice big arch, right? And if you look at my feet, take a look at my feet, I sort of shuffle them until they're both flat. And you want to, so right now you can say I'm creating tension in my glutes, legs, pushing my knees out. This is relaxed, right? You don't want this. You want to be nice, and tight as possible. Yeah, so what, about it. And about yeah, so what are some things that you're like focused on with, with your, besides your legs, what are you doing with your upper back? What are you doing with your shoulders and things like that? So um, you wanna bring your shoulders down and you're, pull your lats down towards your butt. So this is sort of relaxed. This would be activated and engaged, right? So let's sit up and just show people a little bit different look at how that looks. So, um, right. Uh, so, so, when you're on the bench, this would be relaxed. You don't want your traps, you don't want your shoulders shrugged up, right? You want them back and down towards your butt. So this is kind of like Larry's scapula, he's kind of pulling them down and back. We're also trying to get some length in the chest, in the chest here, and that's gonna create more of like a slingshot effect. So if we were, a lot of people, when they come down on the bench, I'll just kind of round your shoulders forward. Right. So this would be a poor position. Now the, the strap, the, the, we're not really getting good stretch in the pecs. We're not gonna be able to use them efficiently in the bottom. But if Larry can really pull his shoulder blades down and back, that's gonna create a nice stretch of the pecs and it's gonna create kind of like a slingshot effect. We're gonna gather tension as we come down and then we're gonna be able to explode more as we come up, okay? So again, rounding the shoulders forward. That'd be a poor position. We're gonna pull the shoulder blades back. And this is something you could kind of practice by yourself. You don't need a bar. We can just kind of work on retracting and protracting the shoulders and kind of get used to that range of motion. Good. So we're trying to get a lot of pressure on this upper back. We're trying to set the feet. So we're gonna go through that setup again. Oh yeah. Uh, if you are a lifter that maybe has some ankle restrictions and things like that, actually lifting with like a squat shoe uh, for bench could be very, very effective. Okay. So Larry's trying to get a lot of pressure. He's setting his feet first, He's trying to drive his, his chest up, getting his rib cage as high as possible. It's going to limit the range of motion. He's really drawing the shoulders down and back, and he's putting a lot of pressure on his traps here. Okay, so that's a good, good, nice, tight setup. If you are comfortable on the bench, and you are not doing it properly. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, you got to get very tight and in a good position here. Uh, if you have trouble with your butt coming off the bench, you could try getting your feet a little wider, or pulling your feet backwards a little bit, and just kind of experiment with what works for you. There's many different variations of foot placement. Uh, it's gonna be kind of different depending on your body type, your hip mobility, and things like that. Which is why it's important to kind of stretch your hips and your upper back uh, before you bench. Also, for people maybe that are watching and maybe are a little bit newer to powerlifting, why would they want to have an arch? Or why is it important to kind of limit the range of motion for like a competition bench press? <laughs> Well, if you're new to powerlifting, the idea is to lift the most weighted as possible, safely and efficiently. So, by having a higher arch, like John said, you get a bigger stretch in your pec, it gives like a slingshot effect. And you're also just in a stronger position. So, if you're benching, doing a, maybe a bodybuilder bench, uh, lower back is making full contact with the bench, flat, you have far more range of motion, right? And if you see, 
it's going to be a lot more shoulder rotation, which could be problematic if you do have some joint problems and things like that too. So right. an arch could be safer uh, as well. So since your spine's not loaded in a bench press, uh, so having that, that arch is going to be definitely beneficial, whether you're a competitive lifter or you're just trying to get stronger and bigger, uh, just like as a weekend warrior type as well. So right. and continue. <coughs> right. So just going to take the bar out and show it with a regular. Yeah, so just let's do Let's actually bring your feet up on the bench and right. let's just show them. Uh, and it's like, you don't do any arch. It's just like, let's just see what the range of motion looks like without an arch. So really kind of protract and stuff. So I'm going to kind of see how high this is and like, let's see that range of motion. And come down. And there's a lot more shoulder rotation in the bottom. And then come up. And now let's see the range of motion with the arch. And let's see how much less shoulder rotation there is and how much higher it just becomes. Chest up. He's trying to pull the bar down actively. You can see it's a lot less range of motion, a lot more efficient. Good. All right, so now once we set up, we're going to talk about the descent a little bit, and we're going to talk about the takeout. Okay. So uh, it is important as well, uh, if you are going really heavy, to have a handoff person. So we're going to kind of go over the handoff and the takeout a little bit. So let's just get a good setup. What's very important is if you're taking it out by yourself or if you have a partner, we don't want to lose that arch we just had. We don't want to lose that position. So a lot of people are going to try to press out the weight and they're going to lose that position. We want to make sure that we are kind of doing an extension and a pullover motion so we can kind of keep that position. So we don't want to press it out and lose position. We want to kind of do a pullover and extension. So if you could use a partner to help you, that's going to be even more beneficial, okay? So Larry's going to count for me. One, two, three. And you can see he's kind of pulling the bar out. His shoulders are depressed. And now we can initiate the lift. At this point in the lift, uh, if you're competing, you might have a start command in certain federations. So what we always recommend, whether you have a start command or not, like same thing with the squat, we're gonna let the weight settle for a bit. We're not gonna just dive bomb down. We wanna make sure that the wrists and elbows and shoulders form a straight line. This is where he's gonna be the strongest. If we're too far forward, now we don't have good joint alignment. If we're too far back, we don't have good joint alignment. So here's where Larry's gonna be strongest. He's depressed and his joints are stacked. Just like in a squat, we want to stand up tall and everything is stacked. We don't want to be too far forward. We want the, the weight kind of balanced over the middle of our body. Okay? Right. So now as you're going through the descent, we're again trying to gather tension down. Larry's going to show you how to lower the weight. Right. I think bring your rib cage to the bar. So trying, he's trying to pull his body to the bar. And that as a cue. And it helps you exaggerate the arch as much as possible. It reduces the range of motion as much as possible. Okay, so I want you to freeze in the bottom. So I want you to kind of notice Larry's position. His Obviously, Larry's got you know great leverages for the bench uh, as he's gotten bigger. His leverages have improved, and you can kind of see his forearms kind of bunching up into his bicep. It's almost creating like this brake pad effect, stabilizing the weight. But you can see his forearms are vertical here, and it's stacked. His wrist and elbow are in a good alignment. His elbows are about 45 degrees in the body. His chest is up. That's a really really solid position. We're going to press it back up. So that's the descent. I just want to, without the bar, I just want to show some common mistakes for the descent. So come down. So this is a good position here. He's stacked. He can hold a lot of weight here. Now, a lot of common, there's a cue that can be misleading and uh, overdone called saying tuck the elbows, which, which is good. But what ends up happening is if you over tuck the elbows, now you're in this weird position and your wrist is too far back. So your elbows now are in more toward the midline of your body. You can't produce as much force there. On the other side of the coin, if your elbows are out too much, Now we're putting the shoulder in a vulnerable position and, we're, and, and it could be, that could be problematic as well. So we want to be kind of somewhere in between with that wrist, that vertical forearm stacked here and that's going to be a very strong position. Good. And you can relax. So how can we achieve that position? Uh, the cues that we like to use is kind of bend the bar and then pull it down. Bend the bar and pull it down. So once we're going to root our feet, we're going to bend the bar, and then as we actually take the weight out, we're going to get a breathe and brace like we do in all our lifts, and then we're going to actually actively think about rowing the bar, think about pulling the body toward the bar, and that's going to create a lot of tension coming down. Okay, so it's going to set up again, and Larry's going to now talk about, we're going to get set up again, we're going to work on the good descent, we're going to let the weight settle, and now we're going to talk about what you're thinking about as you're pushing the weight up, think, what do you think about leg drive, and what's that actual push look like, so let's just get set up again. Be it the 
setup should be as consistent as possible. So he's setting his feet, getting tension in his feet. He's driving to get tension in his upper back. He's bending the bar. We're going to pull over extension out, and we're going to pull the bar down to the body. So we're trying to wedge ourselves under. We're trying to push ourselves away and spread the bar as we come up. Good. Let's push it up about halfway. So right here is sometimes where, like Larry, we will stall. And here, we're going to try and spread the bar and try and think about wedging our body under it to, to lock it out. Good, strong lockout. We're going to let the weight settle, and then we're going to rack it. So Larry, just talk to the, the people listening about when you get that press command in a competition, we're initiating that, that ascent. Uh, what are some things you're thinking about? What are some cues that, that can be helpful for the people watching? Right. Well, first, I think it starts with the legs. And the biggest mistake I had was driving with leg drive with my heels. So when you do that and you think of just pushing the earth away, you end up raising your glutes off the bench. But if you think about sliding the earth away, then it's working to your advantage and you're transferring the, the, uh, your leg drive into the bar. And instead I know, of just- I know a cue you like is like kind of almost like I'm doing a leg extension with-, your, with right? right. I think doing like a quad extension yeah. for leg drive, right? And leg drive should be subtle. I mean, most of the bench weight is from the upper body, but this is just maybe like uh, 10, 15% for me, right? It kind of helps get the weight moving again, right? Exactly. And then what are you thinking about with your arms and triceps and like as you're pushing up, like what's, as you're coming up? So as I'm pushing up, I'm making sure my upper back is stacked and I'm keeping as much tension as possible. It's all the way from my fingertip, I'm gripping the ball as hard as I can, putting as much tension as possible in my arms and my upper back. So when you're pressing the bar, you don't want to lose tension in your back. You don't want your shoulders um, to round forward. You don't want your lats to come out. You want to come here, stay here. And that's going to be the strongest position. Good. So that's kind of like more of the technical things, some mechanical things. I also want to go over some things if you're maybe interested in competing. And also maybe if you're a recreational lifter, like should you pause, should you touch and go. So let's just get set up one more time. And we're going to just kind of go over all the commands. Uh, so it's my belief, uh, whether you're an athlete, you're a competitive power lifter, or if you're just a recreational gym goer, I really do think the paused bench press is a little bit more superior because a lot of people do have shoulder problems, uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow you to do the movement a little bit more strict and make sure that you don't kind of like tear a pec or uh, hurt your shoulders and things like that. So we're going to go over the competition bench press with a pause. By pausing the lift on your chest, it's going to allow you to create some more stability. So let's just go through the command. So by having some sort of start command and letting the weight settle, that's going to also help you set up for success. A lot of times lifters, again, who dive bomb it, they kind of just, we call it like a, like a soft unrack, and they kind of just dive bomb it down. They start to lose their tension, lose their position right away. So let the weight settle a little bit, and it's even going to let the shoulders kind of come down even more and allow you to have even a better start position with less shoulder rotation and more stretch to the pecs in the bottom. So now once we bring it down, once the bar is motionless, if you're doing a competition, you will get a press command. Once you hear that press command, the bar needs to continue to travel upward. Uh, again, if you're a recreational gym lifter, the pause is gonna be very good for building starting strength. It's gonna allow for a safer position for the shoulders because you actually actively need to control the weight versus use momentum to bounce it up. Because touch and go can turn into a bounce very quickly. You could hurt your rib cage, you could hurt your shoulder, you could lose your position very easily. So by controlling it in the bottom, it's a much safer movement in my opinion. And once we drive the bar back up, if you're doing a co competition, you must wait for the rack commands. So you're going to make sure the triceps are engaged. It's such, a, it's a very subtle thing, but make sure you're always locking out all your benches. A lot of lifters, you'll see, they kind of do these half reps and never really fully extend the tricep. And you're going to limit some triceps growth here if you do that. So make sure you're fully extending the elbows. A lot of people I see in commercial gyms, on their last rep, they'll throw it into the rack without locking it out. And that creates a lot of shoulder rotation and that could hurt your, sh the front, your front delt. So you're always going to lock out, you're going to hold for a second, let it settle, and then your partner's going to help you bring it back in. So those are kind of some general safety tips and things like that. Okay? Uh, so that's kind of what I would recommend, uh, whether you're a recreational lifter or a power lifter, that's going to make sure that your bench press is safe, it's effective, and it's going to help improve your performance and strength, whether you're a recreational or power lifter. Okay? So those are some uh, tips from a 610 bencher. Uh, raw six, uh, you know, one of the few men on, in this country who could bench uh, 600 pounds raw. Uh, he's been doing great. He's one of the youngest people to do it. So we hope these tips help you. 
Uh, definitely leave a comment. If you guys like the video, please subscribe, please like, and we'll see you next time.